Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today on the MIP Gamma Gang. And before I start, I should be talking about uh, a little bit at least a, about what we call a linear workflow or why do we need something that is to correct the gamma. In the beginning, uh, I should mention out that this is a longer topic that uh, it's different from what I'm trying to cover here, which is the use of the uh, gamma node itself. So I would encourage you to research the topic and just go to Google and type in linear workflow and you will be greeted with uh, tons of information and how to use it properly in your production. But as in a general uh, rule of thumb here, let me show you a little diagram that uh, just explains the idea. This is the regular RGB color curve and obviously this is the linear and this is the sRGB. So you see there is a, a skew here in the curve itself and what you're trying to do is to push that skew to be the linear itself. Uh, I'm not going to cover that whole idea of linear workflow. I'm just going to uh, talk about the usage of the MIP gamma correction. So I have three shaders here that are applied. They're all surface shaders and um, each one of them is assigned to uh, the same color. So if I go to the shader itself and display the texture correctly. Highest. And highest. So we see it in the display. And all I've done is I added a sun and sky system. So let's quickly render this. All right, and this is what we get. So the first thing people start complaining about is that, hey, why is my texture all washed out? It, it's very nice and crisp here, but when it comes to the sun and sky system, it, it becomes very washed. And the reason is because the sun and sky system itself has a MIA exposure symbol on it. And if you look here at the gamma, it's 2.2. So remember what I showed you in the diagram? So this gamma is 2.2 and you want to correct that or you want to quote unquote bring it down to the same colors that you see in the viewport regardless if the viewport is right or wrong. You will have to say 1 over the 2.2 that will be equals 4.55. If you don't trust me, here's the math. 1 over 2.2 equals 4.545. So that's almost 4.55. To do that, we have a couple of ways of doing this. If we go to the hypershade, in Maya, we have a regular gamma correction node which under the color utility, so let's gonna bring that here. And of course, the mentor ray one is the MIP, and this is gonna be under the lens. So this is surface shader number two, it's gonna get the gamma correction, and this is number three. If let me uh, get a little bit this way. So for the number two, I'm just gonna connect the value and out this it will open this will open the connection editor and I'll take the out value to out color and you should not see any difference in here however if I do the same thing for number three and I will take this one to be my input and it, by default it will connect the alpha as well but we don't need it so I'm just gonna take it out and open the option box sorry the uh, connection editor out value I don't need alpha to out color let's see what's gonna happen here all of a sudden it changes because if you look at the shader itself it got quote unquote corrupted it doesn't know how to deal with this MIP sh so that's one of the uh, mishaps of using this particular MIP shader however the good thing is uh, David Johnson he has his blog let me just pull it out here as you see here he talked about how to fix that uh, error at the display of the swatch itself uh, so you can just follow uh, his instructions is, uh, www.djx.com.au and um, pretty much uh, he talked about the same thing I'm talking about right now but he just explained how to fix that so let's get back to my here because I have a couple of things I want to talk about so if we render you see nothing will happen because we didn't change anything in the node itself either the MIP or the gamma node correction so quickly going back in here and you'll see the gamma correction now remember it was uh, 0.455 that that's the value you want and how Maya looks at it is it called sorry 0.455 it's consider it RGB so it consider the correction R and then G and then the B and the same thing when you look at it in here it only have one value that will apply on three of them so if we render again and now you'll see very visual different between these two so th this color already been corrected or the gamma has been modified to accommodate the change that we've done in it 
So the beauty of having this uh, shader is like uh, over the regular Maya node is that this can be applied cross platform between Maya, Max, or XSI because the, uh, the MI file will will read that and understand it rather than the Maya node itself. Presumably that you already enabled the uh, MIP shaders in all applications. Uh, the other thing is that there's a couple of things here that you can add. For example, you can have the gain, which is a multiplier on it. So let's keep this image and make this as a 2. And you'll see now it's been added as a multiplier on it. So the color has been modified. And of course you can keep adding that because it's just a regular multiplier. So let's get back this to 1. And you can also use the reverse. And you'll see now the color has a reverse gamma on it, or the correction has been reversed, it's actually divided on it. So it inverts whatever the value that was in there. All right, so let's modify that. This is back to one, and let's render that just one more time. Okay, so this shader in the middle, the one that has the gamma correction that's been modified in the regular gamma, and these two guys has this one has no gamma correction, and this one has the value of one. So the reason I'm doing that because I'm just gonna disconnect this and this back to default. So now the only thing that has gamma correction is this node. These two has none. But you can see now with this MIP shaders what you can do is actually go to the uh, camera itself and under the inventory section lens shader. We're gonna add it as a lens shader. And that's why it's sitting under lenses. And of course, if I render this as is, nothing will happen. But if you modify this, this gamma correction will happen on the entire image rather than per shader. So you see now, this has already been gamma, and now it's a double gamma on it. That's why it's too dark. And these guys now has jumped to this value that was there before. So you can add the gamma per surface or per texture, or you can add it for the entire render. As for the uh, linear workflow, again, I would encourage you to look it up and do a lot of reading about it. It will en enhance your uh, production uh, outcome. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. I'm looking forward to talking to you more.